Hello everybody and welcome back to Fantasy Football. It has been quite some time since we um, last uh, recorded a Fantasy Football video um, because uh, there was FA Cup football the kind of weekend before last so there wasn't any uh, scoring going on and then there, there was a very late match because the League Cup final this week so it's, it's Thursday now as I record this to 1st of March and um, yeah just as a result hasn't been one in a little while um, so uh, lots of things to talk about mostly Arsenal related I guess uh, although there were some interesting results going on in the league as well um, if we look at how we did for the week uh, 67 points I don't think that 38 is quite right yet as an average um, probably hasn't worked itself all out yet but um, yeah I'm, I'm, I could have done a lot better um, th there was a couple of things which um, didn't quite go so well and me being a bit of an idiot and going nah, I won't make Salah my captain I'll make Harry Kane my captain well that was I mean Kane did alright it wasn't the worst but I should have made Salah my captain or I guess Sane but I, I would have been more I was debating with myself about whether to make Kane or Salah captain um, I put in a couple of Burnley defenders because I thought they'd get a, a win and a clean sheet they conceded like an 89th minute goal so I was pretty pissed off at that because that would have been another like what three to six points something like that um, so yeah kind of, kind of annoying um, on the plus side, it was very close to Man City conceding today, so I guess that kind of works out okay in the end. We might get a bonus point or two, maybe, um, which may not be worked out yet, but it is what it is. Um, overall, for somehow, we're down, but in England, we're up to 374,000. I'm still outside my 1 million uh, marker, so still trying to do better there, but um, I guess being a lot more consistent recently. Uh, with the way things are going um, but uh, yeah so David De Gea didn't get a clean sheet but I think because he made some saves is that right yeah he made six saves in the game <laughs> I remember that when he made 14 against Arsenal oh dear um, he made six saves so he got like a couple of extra bonus points so he came out with four which is fine um, Otamendi and Walker got clean sheets Otamendi gave away a penalty and got a yellow card um, so I don't know if that marks him down or not with the penalty but obviously the yellow card does Walker didn't um, got an assist as well so very happy with Walker and as I said the two burning defenders didn't really do much wrong but unfortunately they conceded that 89th minute goal uh, Decor in midfield didn't really do that much either. Uh, got a clean sheet and a, you know, and that's it. Sane had an excellent game from from what I hear. Um, I think he got a goal and assist. Is that correct? Yes, goal and assist and a clean sheet. Um, and I think he had a hand in the third, but it wasn't classed as an assist or anything. It was like um, somebody touched it before him and then it, it yeah. So uh, Son didn't do anything um, for Spurs um, Salah was amazing for Liverpool as usual for me no good and Kane scored a goal as well so um, overall okay as I said if Burnley had not conceded we could have been on for a really good week I think as it is I think that's probably going to be pretty average um, in the whole stakes of you know the whole scheme of things um, so let's have a look at the results as we go through so um Leicester Stoke uh, Shakiri scored a really good goal actually I love Shakiri. he's probably like my favourite uh, player um, that is not really like a big player if you know what I mean so he's not like even though I think he is a really good player like he's not a massively well known player um, you know if you if you weren't a really big football fan you might not know who Shakiri is uh, you might know who Shakira is um, but you might not know who Shakiri is but I think he's a really good player and I 
don't think he's going to be at Stoke next season. That would be my uh, bet. Um, unfortunately, despite Butland making a lot of really good saves, he did manage to put the ball into his own net with an own goal, um, which is kind of gutting in a way. How many points is that? And make him end up with he still ended up with six so if he hadn't scored that he would have been on for a really good week um yeah as i said he made some fantastic saves but he just made one mistake really um people were talking about whether or not he should be england's number one um i think it's between him and pickford and i don't think pickford's had a great season so i think he should do i don't think joe hart should be england's number one i i, I think he should probably go to the world cup but, but I think it's going to be Pickford, Butlin and um, Hart, if I was to guess. Maybe Fraser Forster, but I don't think so. Um, Bournemouth to... And yeah, so just to kind of talk about this, I guess, for a second, that's a really good draw for Stoke, by the way. They would have probably preferred three points, but it was a very good... Um, you can find cookies, fine. Uh, but it's a really, really good um, draw doesn't really help them too much they could have been right out they could have pushed crystal palace into the relegation zone yep we're back there again guys um so i'm quite happy that butland managed to concede but i did expect leicester to beat stoke i was considering putting like varney vardy or someone um in there but that's where it goes i think leicester are probably resigned to that kind of like eighth to tenth position in the league this season they're not going to go down but they're not really setting the world alight, are they? So I'd imagine that they're going to get to about 45, 46 points and then probably just take the rest of the season off. Um, Bournemouth 2, Newcastle 2. I was really happy to see Dwight Gale score two goals because I think he's a really good player. Um, Bournemouth, uh, sorry, Newcastle went 2 0 up and then these were like in 80th minutes. So, um, Newcastle will be gutted about that because they're struggling, you know, they're near the relegation zone and that would have been a good three points. They would have been, they would have gone ahead of Bournemouth um, if they hadn't have conceded two late goals. So, yeah, um, as I said, I think Dwight Gale's a really good striker. Um, I think he just gets you goals um, and I hope he gets a bit more of a run than he has. He was like, he was really good in the championship um, and like he's done it in the Premier League when he was at Palace you remember those that like hat trick against Liverpool and stuff like that so like he can do it um, I just think he needs a bit more faith put in him I think but I think he's a really good player I think it was also we saw Glenn Murray uh, score two goals as well so it's like tales of the old Palace strikers how he could have done with them this weekend um, so yeah um, but Brighton smashing Swansea 4-1 um, I did, like, I saw all these games on Match of the Day, and Swansea were pretty bad. Um, I don't know if maybe there was that, like, new manager hype that has, you know, faded away, or if this is just a blip, we'll have to wait and see. But Bournemouth, uh, Brighton were really good. As I said, Murray, again, a guy who I think, uh, very similar to Gale, that uh, performed very, very well in the Championship. Um, when Crystal Palace got promoted and he was their top goal scorer, he got injured, um, like long term injured, and then he didn't come back for us till late on in the season, I think. He did well, but then, like, we got rid of him. Um, he went back down into the Championship with Brighton, I believe, and um, brought them up. And they're giving him a bit of a chance now, and he's doing really well because he's just one of those, like, old fashioned, like, hustle and bustle strikers, you know, who just makes an utter nuisance of himself, Troy Deeney-esque, and um, he can get you some goals. So, yeah, I'm pleased for him as well. Um, but we shall see if this is a blip for Swansea or not. I think Brighton are going to be okay. They're still only four points off the drop zone. Um, so, you know, they're still obviously massively in danger, but and they've got Arsenal next, which, well, we'll see whether or not that's a good thing or not. But, um, yeah, it's going to be interesting. Um, for Swansea, that's a pretty gutting loss, I think. They could have come out of the um, relegation zone, um, and after some really good form, that's pretty shocking for them. Um, 
Burnley Southampton, as I said, was a pretty unremarkable game other than the fact that Gabbiadini scored late on. Um, it was kind of a little bit of a controversial goal because um, <coughs> the uh, referee, he, um, like the ball hit him and that allowed Southampton to counter-attack and eventually score. There was a lot of things going on before that happened, but it did eventually allow him to score. So, yeah, I guess... Um, I guess we'll, uh, um, so I just had to mute my mic there because I was coughing. <laughs> I guess we'll see uh, how that kind of comes about. Th like, Burnley were complaining about it, but at the end of the day, sometimes it's the referee. Like, you just can't help it. It's unfortunate that they scored, but there was a lot of play from that moment. It wasn't like... It, the referee rebounded and then a player just came and like smashed it in or something it like there was a lot of play onwards there's opportunities for Burnley to not concede um, but they did unfortunately uh, Barnes scored who is on my bench but um, other than if I had to say swapped in for Son or Decor wouldn't really have made too much difference up front um, Liverpool absolutely tonking West Ham um yeah, Liverpool are just sensational going forward, aren't they? It, it really makes you think like they remind me of Arsenal of kind of a few seasons ago, where they, you know, when they have like Sanchez at full flow and Ozil at full flow, and you know they were so when they were good, they were really really good. But when they're bad, they're really bad. Um, at the minute, they've been more good than bad. A lot of their players are starting to play very well. Emre Ketchan, uh, Mane's coming back into form. Chamberlain's looking like a really good player. Robertson, the left back as well, um, looks to be a really good signing for them because they have struggled with left backs. Um, they were playing James Milner there a lot. And that's not a natural position for him. Um, and obviously Salah has just been a revelation this season. Easily the signing of the season, I think, without a doubt. Um, you know... I don't think many people questioned Liverpool buying Salah. Um, I can't remember how much they paid now. Um, I think it was like 30 million, something like that. Obviously, it just seems like absolute, like, um, you know, jump change um, nowadays compared to, like, you know, the fees that some people are going for. But, um, yeah, you know, it's it's just, you know, nobody, I don't think, expected him to be this good. Okay, sorry, so it was actually 37 million. Uh, so he went to Roma for 13 million, um, which would be around 20 million modern day value. And um, he uh, went to Liverpool for 37 million. So they, did, they paid a hefty price for him, but he's probably worth at least double that now um, on the back of this season so good investment um, I don't think anybody expected him to be this good though like he is really good watching him play I love watching him play I was thinking about this um, when I was watching the game and I was like I love watching him play because he doesn't look like a normal footballer like he's got this like big kind of like afro hair this big beard and I'm just like he almost feels like a bit of a throwback to like a lot of the time you see footballers and they all have like the same haircut and you're just like so they just literally all go to the same bar but it's like they just feel like there's any kind of like expression of them you know as a person it's almost as if they're like too scared to have um you know a, a different haircut like i guess beckham obviously was very well known for his haircuts and i know it's difficult because if you're on tv every week you know you don't want to have people ripping the piss out of you or become a meme or something but i like the fact that salah is just he just looks a little bit wild and that's kind of how he plays as well um but he's obviously phenomenally good but i don't think he would be as good as he is without the rest of that attacking lineup so without Firmino without Mane um you know these players are the ones who are kind of like setting him free they're the ones who are playing you know passes to him which are really good and he in turn playing passes to them um so at the minute Liverpool have just got this perfect like 
attacking lineup. They just, you know, when you look at the league and you see Liverpool are third and they're so far behind um, City, they've only lost three games. You know, they've drawn nine, which is way too many. In another season, I think, um, like, in a non Man City season, I think this would seriously be like a title race between. Um, well, between Man United, you know, Tottenham and Liverpool, I think you, you would see that. Um, but it's just Man City is so good. <laughs> They're so good. Um, and I think one of the things which isn't helping Man United currently, um, and perhaps Chelsea as well a little bit, is the fact that Liverpool are so entertaining and Man City are so entertaining. And I think, and, and Spurs to some extent, are, are pretty good and entertaining. And I think the fans, especially of like Man United, even though they're second and like they're not having a bad season, they're still in the Champions League. Um, yeah, you know they're they're still there and thereabouts. You know they're not going to win the league. Don't get me wrong, but they're still there. Um, they're still in second. They just had a good win, but the fans are restless as hell. Without doubt, if Man City and Liverpool weren't playing such exciting football, I don't think their fans would be as restless. But they are. Um, in terms of West Ham, there just wasn't really much West Ham could do. They just they just looked like they were. I don't know. Um, I think West Ham are going to be okay, just because I think David Moyes is like safe enough that he's pragmatic enough that he will get wins against teams around him. Um, and I think West Ham do have a really good squad. Um, they're just underperforming badly. Um, Antonio scored a good goal as well, but like these guys' goals were just really good. Um, the whole attacking play of Liverpool is just so so good to watch. Um, West Brom lost Huddersfield at home. I can't see Bardu being there much longer, can you? I mean, seven points off safety. They've only won three games all season. The West Brom are not a good side. Like, they're not a mid-table side, but they're better than where they are. Um, yeah, I, I've, you know, they went 2-0 down, I think, and then they scored from a corner, but, yeah, they're just, I don't know. They're, Bardu was not the right appointment for them. I'm, I'm not actually, like everybody seems to hate Alan Bardu. I kind of understand why he's a bit arrogant, but I don't think he's a bad football manager. Like he's done enough in his career to justify him getting jobs. But recently, he like the Crystal Palace job, he actually did well with Crystal Palace. Like everyone remembers that last season, but he saved us from relegation. He got us to an FA Cup final, um, you know, and then didn't get relegated. That's actually good for a Palace manager, okay? Um, you know, he wasn't terrible at Newcastle. They never got relegated under him, I don't think. No, they didn't. Same at West Ham. Like, it just seems to have something about him that kind of rubs up fans the wrong way, I think, and they just don't like him. Like, I guess just because he's Alan Bardew, maybe. But um, I don't think he's a bad manager. I don't particularly think that he was the manager West Brom wanted at that point in time. I think they needed somebody like an Allardyce or a, a Boulis <laughs> um, to just dig them out of that hole as best they could. And um, yeah, uh, I, think, I, I think they're going to go down. I don't think that's a, a massively wild statement to make. Um, you know, when you look at it and you turn around and go, Palace has scored less goals and conceded more than West Brom, but we got seven more points. Like, that says it all, really. Um, but yeah, I feel sorry for, for West Brom fans. They're a good club, and it would be a shame to see them in the championship. But that's the way it goes. Um, Watford beating Everton, Watford getting back into a little bit of winning ways, they've had a terrible run. Um, Alright, yeah, they did beat Chelsea 4-1, that was pretty good. But before that, they were on a really bad run. Um, and Everton, you know, 
they're very mixed right now, you know, they're, they're, they're terrible, like, away, but good at home, that, that's their thing, they're safe, they're not going to go down Everton, I can't see that happening, but, um, you know, they would have wanted to win that, because I think they still maybe think they've got a hope, and they still do have a hope of getting that seventh place, and possibly getting a, a Europa League place, which would be really big for them, especially with how badly they started the season. Um, I think most, like, normal people would have had them down for seventh this season, and they're still well within range of that. Um, you know, admittedly, they'll probably finish seventh, quite a way away from the rest and certainly miles away from that top four but you know it's <laughs> it's still seventh isn't it so I, I would tip them to finish seventh still but there's still a lot of football to play there's still 10 games left they could get another 30 points it seems doubtful though doesn't it uh, Crystal Palace Spurs oh Late Hurricane goals wins it for Palace. Um, I haven't really got much to say on that one, really. I <coughs> I thought that we would lose the game, <coughs> and we did. <laughs> I thought we'd perhaps lose it by more, but we didn't. Uh, our run recently has been very poor. Um, we got Man United next. Excuse me while I cough again. Um, yeah, our run recently has been very poor. Zaha's out injured. I don't think he's going to be back for the Man United game. Benteke just looks short of confidence. Like, really short of confidence. Um, and we have not got a single point in a game this season when Sahar's not played and that is worrying if we get a draw against Man United I'll be happy with that but I think our like run of games to come is really bad um, so we are probably going to find ourselves in the relegation zone I think we've got like um, Chelsea Man United possibly Liverpool coming up like in the next four games or something like that and um, like that's really really bad um, so yeah I don't know. I've always said that I thought Palace at best would probably finish 17th this season like uh, I, um, I don't know I look at the teams around us and I mean if I'm being realistic probably Bournemouth down are still potentially in trouble. I think Watford are going to have enough to, to get out of it. I don't think Bournemouth are going to go down by the way anymore. I think they're, they've, they've got some steady like progress. I think Brighton should be okay um, as well. And I said West Ham should be alright. So maybe it's Huddersfield down who are probably going to be the real problem teams. West Brom I think are going down. Stoke, um, Stoke's a funny one. They have been a little bit better under Lambert, but that no winning four is not good. Swansea people were like, "Ah, oh, Swansea going to be all right? Yeah, they're looking really good now." But then that they're a horrible loss to Brighton. Like their next game is really important. At home to West Ham, if they don't win that, then that could be a problem for them. Southampton, for me, Southampton are a really good side. They've just got a bad manager currently. Um, I don't know who they would get in if they sacked him, but like I feel that Southampton are one of those teams I would be shocked if they went down. And then you've got Huddersfield and Newcastle. Huddersfield had a terrible run, and then they suddenly won two games, both, um, sorry, 4 1 and then 2 1 against teams around them. And that's what you need to do. They've got Spurs next. That would be interesting. And Newcastle have got Liverpool next. That would be interesting. I could see Newcastle staying up. I mean, at the minute, I literally think it could be between Huddersfield, Southampton, Palace, Swansea, Stoke, West Brom, as to who's going down. And as that, like, narrows, I don't fancy Crystal Palace's chances currently. So I'm very, very worried as a Palace fan. 
Um, but to be fair, if we go down, we go down, don't we? We're we'd probably keep a lot of our squad. We'd probably lose the heart, but we'd probably lose him anyway at the end of the season. Um, we'd maybe lose a couple of other players, but other than that, I could see us keeping a lot of the squad in the championship. And like, it wouldn't be devastating um, if we got relegated to me. Um, so we'll see, I guess. Um, so I'm very worried. <laughs> As Palace, I'm very worried. Uh, Man United won two one against Chelsea. Um, this is a good game, actually. I saw like extended highlights of this. Um, Chelsea took the lead. William, by the way. Oh my goodness. One of the most underrated players in the league, I think, right now. Like everybody always talks about Salah, obviously, Hazard. Um, you know, uh, the the guys at Man City, you know, Sterling, Sane, De Bruyne, and no one's really mentioning William, but he's such a good player. Um, so underrated, I think, because he isn't as flashy as a lot of other players. Like, he's a very direct player, you know, and um, goodness me, that was a good goal from him. I think Brazil are going to be a really good side in the World Cup coming up. I was talking in a FIFA video about how they've already named like their pretty much their starting eleven <laughs> for the uh, tournament, barring like injuries and things like that. They've named like fourteen people in their squad already. Williams, obviously, one of them. And if you think about him up front with like Neymar and um, I forgot who else it would be, but obviously someone else really good. Like they've really got um, like really got a good team Brazil I know that's kind of obvious because um, like they then Brazil right oh Jesus if you think about Jesus you got Firmino as well um, Gabriel Jesus Coutinho like yeah seriously good players there um, but William I think he works hard you know he's and he's just, he's a player I would have in my team all day long. Like, I think he's a player who would get into any side in the Premier League. Um, like, genuinely, I think that. I, I would have him playing in my side every single week. I just think he's a really, really good player. But very underrated. Um, Lukaku had a fantastic game as well. He did really well, I thought. Uh, scored his goal brilliantly. Set up Lingard brilliantly. Um looked like Lukaku of old um, and I saw him play it and I was like Jesus Christ this guy's massive like I remember him thinking he was quite big but he is a unit um, and he actually was putting himself out a bit and actually like using that strength and the pace he's so pacey as well and um, like that's what Man United brought you know people have been very harsh on him I think he's had a great season so far uh, he has scored uh, 13 Premier League goals I think he's got like 20 in all competitions or something I think the problem's been that people are saying in the big games against the top 6 sides he doesn't score um, I feel like that's partly down to Jose Mourinho's tactics more than anything um, you know it's not like they go you know full steam ahead against like you know these teams they play very defensively and trying not to lose so and it feels necessarily his fault that that's happened but regardless of that fact um, you know that hopefully will answer some critics who say he doesn't turn up in big games but he does have to do it a bit more consistently I will say um, but Man United were really good in the second half um, took the game to Chelsea and you know got the win and relieves a lot of pressure I think on Jose Mourinho puts a lot of pressure on Conte doesn't it because that drops them out of the Champions League um, places uh, still very far ahead of Arsenal to be fair but um, you know Spurs start to pick up momentum Liverpool obviously are, are flying at the minute if Man United can drop out these like bad losses here and there you know it's going to be tough for Chelsea to get back into that top four um 
so could be interesting um, I think the best bet for Chelsea would have been to have gone into the Europa League and try and win that um, should have dropped out of the Champions League stages and then just uh, gone into the Europa League might have been their best chance at Champions League football I mean let's just say though Chelsea are a very good side and like it's very uncharacteristic of them to have this many losses um, especially against like Bournemouth and uh, Watford and clearly there are problems uh, with the manager and his relationship with uh, the owners and things like that clearly that is starting to affect the players they've got Man City next and I bet they don't want to be playing Man City right now um, it's, it's a difficult one because I, I think Chelsea have got a, easily got a good enough side to finish in the top four um, but I mean what they're going to do I, I don't feel like second Conte would get them anywhere personally the Barcelona result was good but ultimately you do feel like they're going to go to Barcelona and lose 2 or 3 nil, um, and that will be that so like um, unfortunately I think it's going to be a bad season for Chelsea fans um, if it isn't already <laughs> um, but as Chelsea have often shown, shown, they get a new manager and then they win the league the season after. So, hey, we'll see what happens, right? So, coming on to Arsenal and Man City. 3-0 uh, to Man City. Not surprising because they won the League Cup 3-0 a few days earlier. So, was, uh, this is the thing. Everybody was slaying Arsenal's performance in the League Cup final. And it was bad. Like, it was bad. They, they didn't look like they were going to win it at all, ever, really. Um... They, they just stopped playing in the second half um, but did anybody really expect them to win like honestly did people really think that that's this team who is uh, 30 points behind Man City now and they weren't before but they were close were going to stand a chance a team who are 25 points ahead of the bottom place side in the league and 30 points off the top side in the league did he think they were going to beat Man City at Wembley? I didn't for a second. I also didn't think they were going to win this match because there were just so many problems with Arsenal right now. Um, too many average players who are looking really average. They kind of have a bit of a similar problem to like Man United in a way where their defence is kind of pretty average and they're paying for it a lot like Man United get away with it because they've got a far superior goalkeeper and they do have probably better defenders but not that much better than Arsenal's um, and, but yeah Arsenal are just they're not even um, like putting that much going forward you know Aubameyang missed a penalty in this game he can't afford to do that. Well, he didn't miss it. It was saved. I give the keeper credit, but <clears throat> if you're going to pay that much money for a striker, you better hope he scores penalties. Or, you know, the or, or just don't bother. <laughs> um, I said at the time that people seem to be hailing Aubameyang as like this is second coming like he was going to turn Arsenal's fortunes around and um, <clears throat> I don't think he's an improvement on Lacazette and I don't think that's what Arsenal needed at that point they needed leaders that's what they don't have they need a central midfielder who's going to take it by the scruff of the neck and drag everybody along with him you know like a Gilberto Silva or you know Vieira um, they need def a, a, someone the same in defence you know they need so many things and you know it is negligence from Arsene Wenger that he has not gone and got those players because clearly they've got money they just for whatever reason they you know he just wants to sign attacking players just doesn't want to sign defenders um, there's a lot of talk about him <coughs> Um, not like setting his team up properly so in training he very much is kind of like lets them get on with it 
whereas a lot of other managers will drill kind of like defensive duties and things like that um, don't get me wrong I don't think Pep Guardiola is doing defensive drills like but he's doing everything else so well that they don't need to like Pep Guardiola's philosophy is like if we have the ball then you can't do anything you can't score we have the ball and they do obviously you know practice pressing and stuff like that you can tell um, but I don't think he's necessarily spending a lot of time um, drilling his defenders and sometimes that has hurt them a little bit like their defense hasn't looked that good Man City but their attack is so good that it far outweighs it Liverpool's a little bit similar Arsenal's attack isn't doing anything because there's you know they have this Mesut Ozil who I have never rated as a player I th like everybody raves about this guy but for me he is a YouTuber footballer which is that you can watch a highlight reel on YouTube and go oh my god this guy's the best player but when you watch him play for 90 minutes he just doesn't do anything like he's the highest played player at the club you know he's won a world cup uh, you know he's won a lot of stuff in his like career um, you know he's, he's the biggest player at the club like profile wise and he just disappears in games yeah sure every now and then he'll play a brilliant game and you'll be like oh yeah that's what Mesut Ozil can do that's why we pay the money for him but like he just doesn't offer anything else and as much as you can turn around and go well you know his teammates aren't doing this they aren't doing that at the end of the day if you're going to be the highest paid player at the club you have to take lead by example do you know what I mean you have to take the game by the scruff of the neck you have to be that guy who's going to produce that bit of magic to turn the game around you know when you are losing and he doesn't do any of that and I wouldn't have him anywhere near my team uh, personally um, I can see him being of use in some teams but I generally don't feel like he would get into like Man City's side I feel like he's very very overrated I'd rather have William than Ozil any day of the week. Um, I'd rather have Jesse Lingard than Ozil any day of the week. I just, I just don't feel like all fans want sometimes is a player who is going to work hard, who you can see even if your team isn't doing so well, like he is grafting away and he is trying his best and the fans will respond to that. Like they will, they won't be booing him you know, and it, that then spreads through the team. The team are like, yeah, that guy's trying. You know, Mesut Ozil's out there. But I feel like the, t the players are looking at him and going, this guy's getting paid, you know, 200 grand a week or whatever the hell he is, and he's doing fuck all. Why should I do anything? You know, I'm getting paid a fraction of what he is. And I just, I don't know. I, I would jettison him immediately. I really would. Um, it, the, the, the point Arsenal are at now is that they do have some very good players without doubt but they need to just graft now and they need to see through and get some results and Wenger will never change his philosophy so they're going to take a tonking um, in some more games this season I can't see them finishing lower than 6th personally um, I think they'll do enough against some of the lower teams but They've got to play Milan in the Europa League. Um, Milan have come back into some very good form. But sure, they're not what they're not the AC Milan of old. Okay, without doubt, they're not. But if they're playing some very good football, and if they come up against Arsenal, and they've got a manager like Gattuso, who you know is going to get his team fired up, and they're going to work. Um, I can't see Arsenal getting past them. And then this whole thing of like Arsenal being like, yeah, it's all right, we'll just win the Europa League, we'll get into the Champions League next season. Like, that ain't happening. And then what, you finish sixth, and then you get into the Europa League again next season. Like, it's a steady but very noticeable um, downfall of a football club, which used to be great. They need a new manager. They need some new leadership at the club. Um they need somebody who is going to have a bit of a plan and kind of, uh, I don't know, this is just 
it's kind of one of those things where when you look at it on paper and you go well hang on a minute like this side is sixth and we're saying they're a mess they're a total shambles and then you know i'm like a crystal palace fan and i'm just saying like well we're probably going to get relegated like arsenal aren't in that position but you just feel like this is a side which has revenue like top 10 revenue in the world um and like that they have been one of the biggest names in in world football you know so that, that people bang on about the invincibles but even regardless of that like just the um uh you know just the the history of arsenal you know um as a team and to see them drop so far down while under the helm of one guy because usually team sometimes teams do drop who were once great and usually it's because manager after manager they've just had bad appointments and like it hasn't worked and they've maybe tried to change a manager they haven't stuck around with one um but arsenal have stuck with this manager and it's just not working for them man city are phenomenal they're really 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 good um I hope they win the Champions League this season. I'm not a particular fan of Man City as a club. I'm certainly not a fan of their owners. Um, there's some real shady stuff going on, I'm telling you that now, allegedly. Um, <laughs> there's something like, well, you know, you only have to, like, there, there's really very, like, not only could you argue that Man City, by you know buying all these great players, are kind of you know, people who turn around and go like, oh, they're destroying football. Oh, you know, they're just buying all the best players. But Chelsea used to do that. It didn't destroy football, did it? Just made it more competitive. Um, you know, it went from being a, a like three horse race to a four horse race to being a six horse race. So it didn't really damage it anything anyway. Um, and let's face it, Man City are not going to continue to spend um, like that. They've built an academy which they want to bring players through in. They've got some very good youngsters. Um, so it, it's not their overall plan to continue to spend 200 million every season on players. Um, they obviously want to build a team and then keep that team. And they want to keep Pep Guardiola as well. But like there, there's like morally like I do not like the, the the owners of the business at all but from a football point of view I can't help but admire uh, what they're doing right now and how well they're playing and how good a team they're looking I haven't seen an English team look this dominant in such a long time like Alex Ferguson days or Arsene Wenger Invincible days have I seen a team go out where I'm convinced every game they will win that game <laughs> you know um, but we'll see uh, we'll see what happens ultimately they've won the League Cup now and um, they have still they're going to win the League like they're 16 points clear with 10 games left they're going to win the League um, they can win the Champions League I feel like people don't want to go, oh, it was a failure if they don't win the Champions League, which is utter bullshit. Like, <clears throat> uh, the Champions League and any cup competition is extremely difficult to win. All you need is one bad game, and that's it. Whereas in the league, you can have one bad game, say this game, and you can still romp it, okay? The league is about consistency, and consistently they are by far the best team in the league. The cup is about, on that day, everything functioning and firing 100% and that can be very difficult that's why Real Madrid are very good at cup side and perhaps not so great in the league like they're big game players you know and I feel like and they've got a winning mentality and I feel like Man City have got to be considered favourites for the Champions League favourites don't always win it though so we'll see there are some very good sides out there right now um, so yeah next week or actually only a couple of days away Burnley Everton 
Dunno. Leicester, Bournemouth, Dunno. Southampton, Stoke, Dunno. Spurs, Huddersfield, I'd go with Spurs. Swansea, West Ham, no idea. Watford, West Brom, Watford. Liverpool, Newcastle, Liverpool. Brighton, Arsenal. I mean, that's a big game, right? Because uh, Brighton just coming off a 4-1 win. Arsenal off two 3-0 batterings from Man City. Like, are they going to be able to pick themselves up and do the business against Brighton? Probably yes, because it's Arsenal and that's what they do. Um, and then Man City, Chelsea, another really interesting game uh, going on there. And then Crystal Palace, Man United, Man United will win that. Um, in terms of my team, what would I change? Uh, probably look to bring in Lukaku maybe up front. Actually, <clears throat> I'm going to keep Sane, he's in such phenomenal form. Uh, do I think Burnley are going to get a clean sheet? Should I change that? Uh, they could do actually against Everton. Everton are not firing too well. Uh, definitely going to keep Decorah against West Brom. They should win that, you'd think. I don't know if I'd change my side too much other than... No, actually, I'd keep Son as well. Yeah, I'd probably keep this side, you know. Um, let me know what you change or, or what you're going to do or players you're going to bring in. Um, as always, thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.